What's up guys, Tyler here again, I'm joined again by Jared, and we're here to discuss and give our thoughts on the Ubisoft 2016 E3 conference. How's it going, Tyler? I'm good, tired, but good. I, I just watched both Ubisoft's and Sony's conference, and I'm ready to dive into this thoughts on. So uh, I guess, let's go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room, which, uh, which is the uh, start off for that conference for Ubisoft so uh every year they like to do their little Just Dance thing because they think people actually like Just Dance and care about it so they need to show it off every year at E3 so uh I believe when it started I was messaging you something and then all of a sudden what I saw made me just sit there with the most blankest face for like three minutes straight and like I went brain dead I couldn't even remember what I was like gonna say to you or anything <laughs> yeah Just Dance why I, I think they always open their show with Just Dance for the past two or three years no, they well yeah maybe and then like they always go in like to death and like oh yeah you could do this dance and this dance now so basically what they did was they opened off their show with like a little concert of people dressed up like Freaking rainbows and skittles and all that crap and just dancing, and there was a guy dressed up as a giraffe, for some reason, and a guy had a very big fake guitar and I was so confused <laughs> and it hurt my brain. Yeah, very cringeworthy. Oh yeah. Like the um, E3 is just should be called cringe three, but I mean <laughs> sorry, yeah, but. So Just Dance has its own audience, and it doesn't need to be showcased at E3 all the time like that. I mean, sure, it sells a lot, but I mean, if you haven't gathered the audience that you want now, you're not going to get it. So, I mean, while it was nice to see the big old production and everything, like, yeah, welcome to the Ubisoft E3 conference, it's, sometimes it's just not needed. Yeah, I and, mean, Ubisoft's definitely like the cringiest when it comes to E3 just because you got Aisha Taylor who God is annoying <laughs> I mean, she, she may be annoying but she gets the job done she kind of yeah know, but things she along, tries but... way too hard she's gotta drop a sex joke or something every two seconds and then she laughs at it because no one else will <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, they start off with that. And after my brain finally came back online after being, like, shut down from that retardedness that that was, uh, they started off showing, actually, games that we care about. And they started off with uh, the new Ghost Recon game. And uh, I messaged you this as well. Anything we saw in that gameplay show off will not happen in that game. At all. It's basically like the Division show off to where, oh yeah, it looks cool, but none of it will ever happen. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I feel like that sort of stuff is possible, but the chances of it happening are like slim to none because oh, yeah. the people who are doing that were like told, okay, do this and do that so we can show off this. But people jumping into the game, when something like that breaks down, the first thing that goes in their mind is, oh crap, let's all get in the car and just chase this man and run him off the road. Not like set up these cool sequences with the helicopter and motorcycle and all that. I mean, overall, the whole setup and flow and the idea of like, you, it's open world and you could take any approach to it. It's, it's cool, but... They did I mean, the same thing for The Division, though, and that, look how that game turned out. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so. you got you got people pretending to, like, talk online and all that. Like, yeah, I'll go around this way and you go that way. Oh, crap, this happened. Scripted chase scene and cars go. <laughs> yeah, and the, I mean, and the comment sections on Twitch, the chat section was just blowing up with, of course, this is scripted and, like, paid voice actors and stuff. So, I mean, the game looks good. I feel like... They could have showed it off better, but it's just like the time that they spent on these games, especially like the good games everyone were hyped for, the time that they spent on it was just going on and on and on. I feel like it could have went more quicker yeah. and more smoother. Yeah, and as one who's never played any of the Ghost Recon games, 
they didn't really do a good job of explaining like what all you're doing in that game and like what's all about and all that. So uh, yeah, that mean I won't carry it away. So uh, yeah, yeah, and I I try to be more generous with it, but like like what you said, I have no clue what's going on. My assumption you're probably like mercenaries or something like that, or maybe the SEAL Team 6 of this game or something? Who, who, who knows? knows? I mean, eh, I don't know. Uh, so, yeah. But uh, then we actually got to a game I actually like, which is the new South Park game, which is called yes. South Park, the Fractured Butthole. <laughs> Not the butthole that you're all thinking about. But the butt and then the word hole. <laughs> so, <laughs> the void that word actually getting in there so clever but uh yeah i love south park to stick of truth it's i mean south park so i mean what else is there to say if you're a fan of south park you're gonna love it so this time it's based around like superheroes and everything i saw like the gameplay demo that they did of it and it's hilarious <laughs> so i love like the shots they took of like at like all the uh superhero movies I mean, I love the super. I love superhero movies and all that. But like, just I have to say, those shots are pretty clever. Like Cart, like Cartman calling uh, the the group of kids who like end up leaving, saying, "Yeah, we're gonna do our own movies." And then he just calls, "Oh yeah, you probably won't even get through Phase One." GC Comics, like obviously a shot at DC Comics. So <laughs> uh, that was pretty hilarious. Yeah, it was just funny. And then like how you're still. I thought it was cool how there was like you're still the new kid from the first game, so you're it's, you, how yeah. You they like said it's like immu- it's like the second day after, so immediately like you're ranked back down to douchebag. <laughs> it's like yeah. you show up wearing your crown, and they're just like, oh, like yeah, what? <laughs> and then it's funny how like Cartman gives you your story, like you walk in on your parents, and that that scars oh, you. Oh yeah, life, saying that you, can't you can trust choose anyone. They have, they act like, instead of, like, four classes now, from what, uh, the Stick of Truth, they now, like, allow you to have, like, that you, I think you have the ability to choose, like, over a dozen classes of superheroes in the game now, so, and I'm assuming that each one's gonna be randomized, <laughs> whatever you choose, so the one in the demo, you chose, like, the Speedster, I think it was, or something, and so, Cartman's like, yeah, you <laughs> walk in on your parents, and it's like, it's just hilarious. So it's, <laughs> it's South Park in good fashion. And it's like, the overall game is great. It's like the, the small things that they add. Like when Cartman tell you to take, told you to take the seat and you would go to the other <laughs> Not that one. Be like, no, not that one. <laughs> not that one, stupid. <laughs> and no, then it's like you went out. Seat. And then when like the flashback, it's like you went out the door. <laughs> and the guy just goes to the toy chest. You went out the door. <laughs> Like, Can you just go out the door? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it's an amazing game. It's South Park, so it's going to bring the South Park fans, the people who played the previous game, it's going to bring them. So, all in all, it's pretty good showing of the game. I yeah. enjoyed it. And it's coming out this year, which, that kind of surprised me. I wasn't expecting that thing to, like, maybe, like, late 2017 or something, but it's coming out in December. So, and it's another game to make me go broke <laughs> this and year. The best, and the best thing to leave off, of was the whole argument of the order of the movies like should we do a civil war first and then <laughs> Kenny's like Kenny's like why do I get the Netflix series no you get the Netflix series and then you join us for Coon and Friends 1 <laughs> so and then they have this whole argument He's like oh you want civil war yeah screw you right, isn't civil war home. phase 3 shut up <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's a great game yeah I, I can't wait for it so uh, then they brought the division and I don't know went through some DLC and expansions and all that like whatever I mean the division just they're like disappointing game from Ubisoft so that list is piling up every year (laughs) well what it looks like for this it's like they're hoping to pump new life into the division um, with this DLC and I mean it's not going to bring any new fans it might bring new fans, but the people who are playing the division right now are like pretty much set. It's like a set number. It may go up a little, may go down a little, but I mean, one of the issues that I had about the division was once you finished the main storyline and you went to the dark zone, that was it. 
all you could do was dart zone and it got boring after a while so that kind of suffered the same fate of destiny like the main story and all that was this big old thing but like there wasn't much to do afterwards yeah i mean i played the beta for division i hate it it, it was again like i said just no like failed hype up game for movie soft so so yeah after that they uh see the thing is since i didn't watch it live I just skipped over a lot of stuff like I wasn't interested in Lynn. Like, I, of course, went... I at least watched, like, a minute or two of it. Just, like, jot down. Like, okay, well, they showed this off. So they showed some sort of, like, flying pigeon game or something like that. I don't know if you caught that. I have no idea yeah, what it is. Yeah. It looks like a PvP pigeon game or something. Yeah, it's their new uh, VR experience. Um, and this this is another one. Like, I mean, it, it's cool to... Sh- everyone's everyone at the at for the past few days of e3 have like showed okay we have this to give the vr and i have to say ubisoft is losing in this game theirs was the most underwhelming you had ea which was like okay that's cool microsoft yeah yeah they're working on oculus and then there's ubisoft like okay ubisoft what's this I mean, Star Trek, sure, there's a Star Trek fan, and there's a lot of them, a lot of numbers. There's strength in numbers in that department, so they'll travel to that. Yeah, there was also a new uh, VR Star Trek game, which I, when I went back, like I told you, I, like, avoided Twitter (laughs) all day after I got home from work to watch Ubisoft, because I don't want any spoilers. And, like, immediately after I saw the Star Trek thing, I went back to Twitter and just saw everyone losing their mind over (laughs) the announcement of that, so... Yeah, so I imagine in the next year we'll see on the React channel the Fine Bros and a bunch of other things. They put the VR on the old people from back in the days, and they're going, whoa, whoa, it's Spock. It's all of these old technological things we used to think about, and now it's real. And she's so, like, oh, God, this is making my head dizzy. <laughs> so... I guess they knew what they were doing. There's the new fans who geek out over it, and there's the old fans. And, you know, old people like to try new technology that may put them in the hospital. But, you know, that's America. That's what we do, right? America. But, yeah, so, new Pigeon VR game. And PvP I mean, mode, apparently. <laughs> I'm so confused by it still. And then the Star Trek VR game. And... Sure, they could have showed it all, but a whole match. I, I just think, at, like at first it was like, oh, what's this? It looks interesting. Okay, cool, VR. You get to do this, but then after a while, it just got boring. Just sitting there and watching, like, okay, this is all you do. And it's just, I came here to see games, and all I'm seeing is this one VR experience. That's just one cringeworthy comment after the other. Because everyone's trying to get in the VR experience, man. But not VR's everyone has the to be new VR. generation, man. But not everyone has to be VR. And, and that's that's okay. But, I mean, sure, maybe they'll come up with some better games for VR. Who knows? Yeah. But, yeah, we got that. And then, uh, they did For Honor, I believe. Yep, they did For Honor. Uh, they didn't do multiplayer, like, show off this time. They did uh, Story Mode, which kudos to them for including the Story Mode. It looks interesting enough. So, like, I like the idea that, like, the trailer basically just, like, told us, like, it was like some post-apocalyptic crap went on. And so, like, all three of the factions, the Vikings, Samurai, and Knights are all fighting because, like, They've been doing it for thousands of years, all because of, like, survival and all that. Just because of, like, the apocalypse was upon them and everything. So, I think that was pretty interesting and clever. Yeah, and, like, the whole cinematic trailer, it got me hyped. Like, I, I was hyped before. Like, last year, when I first saw this, and I saw, like, all the controls and stuff, I was like, wow, this is something new. I'm interested in this. But after the cinematic trailer, just the whole sequence and everything, it was like, okay, that that's cool. Let's see what else they're going to bring. Then they showed the gameplay of the story mode of the campaign. And maybe Where you play as a Viking. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully you just don't play as a Viking. Maybe you can choose. Or maybe they have you switch back and forth between the three factions. Who knows? 
That'd be, but, yeah, that'd be cool if that, like, each faction gets its own, like, little story mode type thing. And, like, one of the things, maybe they shouldn't have shown all of that. Maybe it's the first mission, but maybe they haven't shown, they shouldn't have shown all of it. Maybe just, like, a snippet, because when it's always short and sweet, it leaves people wanting more. But when you see, like, the whole gist of the game, sure, it gives you all the information you may want, but... After a while, you, you already seen the gameplay and stuff, so you're not like all hyped up. It's not the big hype machine wondering like what's going on, what's going to happen. Yeah, and the story I was also talking about some. I'm I'm assuming there's gonna be the antagonist at the end. I forget her name, but like, just basically think like Ares, the god of war, and then think that's basically her. <laughs> Only she's not like a god, as far as I know. She just like really wants those three factions at war because she loves war. So. Yeah. That should set up for an interesting, like, ending, at least. So, For Honor, so far, Ubisoft is doing things right. So, they ha For Honor, they have the multiplayer looks great, the whole fight and combat looks great. Now, we know they have a story mode, and you are allowed to play offline. Now, one thing that, I don't know, would be cool if, like, the story mode was co-op or something like that. And... A lot of things that I have been seeing, people have been wanting, was maybe some some form of on-screen versus or something like that, especially with console players. So maybe if they add that in, well, like, a lot of what, people what, like sp will buy split screen it. or something. Yeah, well, like I, two I, on two battles. Here, uh, one on one battle. I'm looking at the Steam page right now. And it says uh, shared split screen, so that'll be part of it. Yeah, so uh, that's a game I'm getting because heading over to my cousin's house and having big old sword fights. Well, yeah. who, who wouldn't I, want that? It does yeah. look fun, but it, I mean, I mean, everyone's gonna play it mostly for the multiplayer. Like, I mean, the single player, don't get me wrong, is a nice addition, and I'm appreciating that they're doing it. But I mean, it's like mostly everyone's gonna be playing it for the multiplayer, so it depends all on. Can you multiplayer keep people interested enough to keep playing, and not die out within the few days that's out or something? I mean, don't it looks like amazingly fun, but it just all comes down to like, can it appease people to get them to keep playing? So we'll have to see. I kind of would have liked to see more multiplayer, uh, show um like more of a multiplayer show off rather than single player, because I mean they could have just done an announcement saying there was gonna be a single player, but you know. I would, yeah, I would have been fine with like a story trailer, like that trailer they showed, and then like multiplayer or something. But for what it is, it's good enough. So yeah, and they mentioned like before E3, like a month before, like how they revamped the customization and all that. So hopefully, like customization would also help bring character and your own presence and persona and stuff to the game. So this game so far is doing good. Now, let's not downgrade or remove anything that we like, Ubisoft. And you'll have, like, one of the best games of 2016 possibly on your hands. It comes out next year, but yeah. <laughs> comes out oh, Valentine's Day. <laughs> That's what makes it even more hilarious. But of course, Aisha Taylor had to make, like, had to make the joke way longer than it needed to be. It was like, she's yeah. like, yeah, if you want to get your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, uh, medieval fighting or whatever and for valentine's day and that's it and it's like yeah yeah okay that's clever i guess and then, like she's just extending the joke and it's like just stop it's and she like brings up or maybe they'll move out by tomorrow morning it's like just stop <laughs> no one's yeah. laughing just stop i don't know. it's probably sure it's funny for like shits and giggles but maybe not that fun to poke poke at your audience haha -ha, gamers relationships, but they're going to ruin it all over games. Or they're all just lonely. I mean, I don't think she was making that kind of a joke, but, you know, it was just a joke that she was, like, staying way too long. But anyway, yeah, so, for honor, and then they had some other small game grow up. Uh, I didn't really care. It looked... I mean, it's like, it's basically like a small-time, like, game about Red Robot or something like that. I wasn't interested. So... Do you have anything to add to it or are we moving on? Because I really don't care about it. 
we can move on. Yeah. It, it, it was a waste of time. <laughs> uh, then they had a game they like released right after the conference, Trial of the Blood Dragon. And apparently, by the Steam reviews, it's not so good because it has... I think it was mixed last time I saw it. It might be better. Who knows? But yeah, it had a mixed yeah. Steam review. So, so I'm basically just getting it. It was like average and sucked. Yeah, it's still a mix. So, uh, 22 reviews mixed. Yeah, it didn't look um, interesting to me. <laughs> so, this is a weird team up right here. Blood Dragon has all that nostalgia and 80s VHS 8 bit type feel. Like, yeah, retro. And then Trials is all that make you mad, rage quit type of time trial racing game. Uh -huh. or race against time game. And they make it all jam pack and over the top and stuff. But I don't know. Maybe, I mean, it's a, it's a cool idea, but maybe wait. Or it shouldn't have, I feel like the game is too small for E3. Like, it could have just been released out of the blue or a YouTube trailer and saying coming soon and I don't know like certain games are just not for E3 just like how that game growing up with Bud the robot just not for E3 and yeah. just one of those games I mean they act like yeah we're offering such a great deal to everyone this day right now it's like it's a small $15 game uh Thanks, I guess. I mean, whatever. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. If you enjoy it, enjoy it. If you hate it, hate it. So. Uh, after that, they showed off Watch Dogs 2. And of course, they had to make it look like their conference was getting hacked or whatever. Which, eh, sure. Okay, clever enough. I mean, depending on what Watch Dogs is. And honestly, I gotta say, it looked boring. Cause Watch for, Dogs 2? Yeah, first off, the guy, like, showing it off was, like, talked for, like, probably, like, the first five, ten minutes of it, and then he was just quiet the rest of it. And I think with Watch Dogs is, now we know what to expect, so we're not, like, building so much hype around it, and we actually know, okay, well, this was stupid and messed up in the first one, so maybe they actually fixed it or not in the second one so we like most everyone knows what to expect now and what they want for the second game it looks boring to me it like i was watching the whole gameplay i just could not get interested like the protagonist they're i'm i'm i can tell they're trying to make the protagonist more interesting than aiden because aiden was like a cardboard box and was boring and they're trying to add like personality to this new protagonist but he's just seems boring as well, along with like his NPC friends or whatever. So the combat's still pretty much the same. They've added like new phone hacking features, which is cool. But I mean, I don't think I'm gonna get it. I'm probably not, just because I still think I get bored with it. Because I got bored with the first Watch Dogs. So, well, I mean. I know I make hedge crap for this, but I actually enjoyed my experience in Watch Dogs up to a point. Like, it was something new. Like, I, I could get some enjoyment out of it. Like, I liked the idea first off. It was a clever idea. It just didn't, like, live up. First off, it was hyped up, so that was, like, beyond any other game. So that's what, like, killed it first. And it was just, it didn't provide enough. So... I mean, I did get enjoyment out of it a little, but the cons outweighed yeah. the pros. But hopefully, Watch Dogs 2 gets that Ubisoft second generation special rub. Like, how everyone always referred to Assassin's Creed 2 as the best Assassin's Creed game, and it was a step in the right direction. Maybe this will be the same for uh, Watch Dogs. So, only time will tell. It'll look interesting, but I can also see how he get born real quick. So, who knows? Yeah, I'm, comes out November. So, I mean, I'll say I don't even know who asked for this game. Like, maybe a few fans, but I really don't think, like, this was, like, a high-demand game. Like, this kind of just snuck up on everyone, like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty much probably how it was. 
I mean, let's be honest too, those graphics are probably going to get downgraded as well. Just It's just them showing more features that won't be available in the game. Or if they do, they're like dumbed down, like most of Ubisoft stuff. So, yeah. Watch Dogs 2. I'm not looking, I, I'm not going to get it. It just does not interest me. Now I know what I'm looking for. So, uh, yeah. And then, instead of finishing off with that, they decided they'd rather finish off with some snowboarding game. Yeah. Which, I mean, wouldn't make more sense to finish off with Watch Dogs, but instead they were like, yeah, no, uh, we got this snowboarding game that we're sure all of you are gonna love. So, we saved the best for last. Well, I could see how people would like it. I... Okay, so my my thoughts on it were, okay, what is this? But, I mean, after watching it and seeing, like, all these grand things happening, the thing that caught my attention the most were the wipeouts. So, I'm like, okay, well, yeah. so, so I, just, I just put myself in the position where I'm playing with my friends and we're just seeing, like, who can do the craziest things and all of us are just wiping out and, like, the guys are making the funniest sounds, like, Everyone in the whole E3 conference were laughing when they were skydiving or whatever, and that guy was like, oh, no, and then smacked right into the rock. So I guess, like, seeing pain and suffering in that game would be funny. But I don't know. After a while, I guess it would just be the same old boring thing, snowboarding, skiing, skydiving, hang gliding. I mean, so it's a game. It's something different and new, and maybe it would be a snowboarding fans. Things. And I agree, yeah. the wipeouts were fun to watch. So I might get it just just to see it how it is, because the best way to experience things is to experience yourself. So yeah, it may be it may be the beginning of a new trend. Maybe next time there'll be a game in the Rocky Mountains where you just. They're going to they're gonna snowboarding so. down a rocky mountain. <laughs> I can't imagine how well that's going to go for them. <laughs> Terrible. So, I mean, not a great way to close Ubisoft, but it, in a way, it kind of shows how confident Ubisoft is in this game. Because normally, the thing to open and end the game are, like, the two things that they really trust in or really like. So shows how much trust Ubisoft is in going in the new direction, trying to lead the gaming world in this new direction of environmental fun and just all-out sandbox game. If you want to do this, you can do it. I mean, sure, you can't do everything you want to do, but... So, game overall, I enjoyed it. The whole Ubisoft game experience. I mean, yeah, Some honestly, like, right. probably have, like, Comparing this to their past two conferences, this was <laughs> probably like their least cringiest, just because they got Just Dance out of the way, and I mean, sure, Aisha Taylor's jokes were still bad, but there weren't as many, so. Yeah, and I mean, good conference. Congratulations on their 30th birthday, you know. Oh yeah, that's right. 30 years strong, Ubisoft, 30 years making us mad, but... We still buy your games. We don't know why. It's just something we do. But. Damn you. <laughs> the Ubisoft curse. We can't leave it. But, I mean. Yeah, so. Not better than. I, I, I think it's going to be a while before Ubisoft has another popular one as the 2012 or 2013 one when they first revealed Watch Dogs. Because that's like one of their most talked about conferences. So. It's going to take people a while to trust Ubisoft after the whole Assassin's Creed meltdown and Watch Dogs meltdown. And, and a bunch of overhyped games that don't live up to it. <laughs> yeah, Ubisoft are great at hyping things up. They should, they should go into marketing. It's because they, they build their games around like great ideas. It's just then they like promise too much and like or like try and say, yeah. It's going to look like that when it comes out. And it's like, when the game comes out, no, it doesn't. What are you talking about? Yeah, it does. We wouldn't tone down the graphics. But yeah, 
Ubisoft's conference, E3 2016. Yeah. Uh, so my plus of this game to take away were, of course, Wildlands. Hopefully that that that's that's great. If it is, I'm I'm getting it just to test it out. My friends and I. Um. So one thing going back to Wildlands that I really want to know is is there like a single player campaign or do you must have like do you have to be online with four with three people three other people in order to do these missions like can you go one man band or just two of you on what Tom Clancy's uh oh Ghost, Ghost Recon I'm sure you could do all single player so yeah so there's that so Wildlands South Park Watch Dogs, For Honor, all games that I'm looking forward to. So, South Park's only one I'm looking forward to. But yeah, that sums up our thoughts on. So next we'll do Sony. So I'll upload Ubisoft and I'll upload Sony, and then I guess we'll, or uh, I don't know, we'll probably do a final thoughts on or E3 in general. So, but yeah, see y'all later.